everywhere. I see some familiar faces, very good. Uh, Dr. Bill Fu, Chairman of the Singapore Business Circle, uh, Professor Abhishek, uh, ladies and gentlemen, very good morning. Um, I'm pleased to be invited here for today's dialogue. I'm glad to see that we are all adjusting well, uh, getting accustomed to this new format of uh, engagement. While video conferencing is not a perfect substitute for physical meetings, it does give us the opportunity, uh, at least for me, to engage with people from outside of Singapore. So a big warm welcome from those who are dialing in from outside of Singapore. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity. As the professor has said, I'm the chief executive of the Cybersecurity Agency, CSA for short. Um, we were set up about five years ago to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of the computer systems networks and information that make up Singapore's cyberspace. But more than that, I don't see ourselves just as a technical agency. I see CSA as the custodian of public trust and confidence in digitalization for Singapore. I'm speaking to you in interesting times. COVID-19 has forced many of us around the world to adapt to a new way of learning, working, and living. It's vastly accelerated digitalization around the world. This opens up numerous opportunities. Digitalization promises greater efficiency, improved convenience, broader participation, and better services potentially for everyone. For example, The Economist recently ran several articles espousing the benefits of a national digital identity to facilitate the provision of government services online. These include suggestions for a national database for healthcare records, online visa applications, and even services for digital registrar of marriages. Well, call me old fashioned, but I prefer to uh, marriages in church, I think. Uh, so some things are uh, potentially more efficient. I'm not sure that they are necessarily better. But we are at an exciting turning point when it comes to digitalization. The digital revolution is happening as we speak. More and more of our daily lives will come to rely on digital technologies moving forward. But with the potential for digitalization, while the potential for digitalization is enormous, it also prevents profound challenges. Accelerated digitalization and interconnectedness will increase our threat attack surface. As more users start to adopt new digital tools, they will become exposed to threats in the cyber domain. Some of the users will be navigating the digital space for the first time. Few will be aware of the increased vulnerabilities and even fewer will have the needed uh, cyber hygiene yeah, or instincts needed to guard against these digital dangers. This leaves us susceptible to cyber threats. Malicious actors have shown themselves ruthless and entrepreneur in exploiting fear and interest surrounding COVID-19. They have launched targeted COVID-related phishing campaigns to take advantage of the situation. They also targeted nascent work from home ecosystems. Such cyber threats do not respect geographical boundaries. In fact, they deliberately target the seams between our national jurisdictions and they have the potential to wreak significant real-world damage. If left unchecked, such threats can undermine the trust and confidence of the essential digital progress. To operate in this new normal of social distancing requirements, travel limitations, organizations must digitalize, but they must digitalize securely. Cybersecurity is essential for organizations to be able to protect their digital assets and ensure their clients' uh, privacy. This is a challenge given the growing scale and sophistication of cyber attacks around the world. As of last month, studies estimate that nearly 16 billion records have been exposed in 2020 alone thus far. 8.4 billion were exposed in the first quarter of the year. This is more than a two-fold increase compared to the 4 billion records exposed in the first half of 2019. Exposed data records translate into actual costs for organizations. According to IBM, the average cost of a data breach in 2020 is US $3.8 billion. Worrying, worryingly, IBM believes that the remote work in view of COVID-19 may increase the potential costs of a data breach. New work arrangements could increase the time to detect and contain a breach. Beyond the substantial 
financial direct costs of a cyber attack, often the indirect or intangible costs, such as the loss of public trust, client confidence, are likely to be even higher. These can have lasting damaging effects to an organization's reputation, not to mention stock price. It is therefore no big surprise that the World Economic Forum identified cyber attacks as one of the top business risks globally. Cybersecurity is more than just insurance in case something goes wrong. Consumers used to demand that products are faster, better, cheaper. But in the digital age, consumers are likely to be also concerned about privacy and data protection. Strong cybersecurity and commitment to protection of digital assets of your clients is a strategic investment. And it can be a key differentiating factor between you and your competitors. As such, I urge you to treat cybersecurity as a core component of your business. Cybersecurity, of course, must be considered in context. There is no one size fits all. Just like any business decision, cybersecurity decisions are contextual. They should be revised as the situation evolves. Let me illustrate with an example. Say you're leading a bank. Traditionally, your bank would not allow for client data to be accessed remotely, but all removed from the office. However, because of COVID-19 and work from home, new social distancing requirements, the majority of your employees are suddenly required to be out of the office, to be working from home. You need to meet urgent ground needs and it's likely that you would make certain allowances that may allow you, that you would not have made under the previous circumstances. This is essential because work needs to continue. You may allow for some data to be accessed remotely from people's homes. Hopefully you have put in place some technical security uh, measures in place. But what it means is that there has been a change in your organization's risk profile. There is an increased exposure, for example, to cyber risks. After COVID-19, after the, firstly, people are accessing the data from home, they are using unsecure home networks. Secondly, there is no guarantee that you know who else is looking at the data when they're in the home. Is someone looking over the shoulder? So the question is that after the COVID-19 situation dies down, what then? Should your organization recalibrate or should your organization keep to this new normal? There are no absolute right or wrong answers in such a circumstance. Each organization must establish a process to carefully consider the context, weigh the trade-offs, and make these difficult decisions for themselves. But the first thing that you need to understand is that you have changed your risk profile. So recognizing that this has happened and then making the assessment and deciding what to do are key. To navigate this, I suggest a three-pronged approach. Caution, consultation, and control. First, caution. Even if there are some requirements, even if some requirements are relaxed, organizations should proceed with caution. Organizations should consider the need for other checks and balances given the heightened risk exposure. Uh, some of these could be technical, uh, some, could, some could be procedural. As, at the same time, you ensure that your staff are more alert and more attuned to the increased risk of this new operating environment. Second, consultation. Call a friend. Organizations should consider hiring trusted third parties to review and assess their new risk posture. Often organizations don't even realize that they have shifted in their risk profile in view of the circumstances. A trusted third party can help to review and uncover any blind spots and act as an additional layer of assurance. Third, control measures. Changes to your organization's risk profile should not have crept in unnoticed there should be a new process to ensure that such decisions are governed by your appropriate internal processes. Such decisions should also be reviewed regularly, especially given the rapid changes to the environment and the working environments. So the key question is, who decides on what the appropriate risk appetite is? Well, it certainly can't be left to the technical or the IT personnel alone. Such decisions should be made at the right level of the organization hierarchy. In my view, it is a leadership responsibility. Leaders are crucial because cybersecurity is not just a 
technical issue. It is a strategic, it is a risk management issue. Why do I say this? Well, the answer is because that there is no such thing as absolute cybersecurity. The only secure computer is the one that's still in the box. Once you take it out and start using it, well, you're taking on risks. So cybersecurity involves trade-off decisions, trade-off between usability and security. If you leave it in a box, you've got very high security, but zero usability. So there is an iron triang triangle of usability, cybersecurity, and cost. This needs to be balanced. Leaders have the responsibility and the accountability to make this trade-off decisions. They understand the nuance, nuances of the business and they have the oversight of the changing context, the operational as well as the business imperatives that allow them to make these difficult trade-off decisions. As I said, it can't be made purely by the technical people. They do not have full oversight over some of the other issues that I've discussed. After all, think about it from the perspective that if something goes wrong, it will be the leaders themselves sitting at the press conference explaining the breach. So to summarize, cybersecurity will be imperative to harness the potential of digitalization, both from a societal as well as a business perspective. I argue that cybersecurity is a core business prop proposition and it is crucial as we adapt and adopt the new normal. As leaders, cybersecurity is your responsibility. I urge you to continue strengthening the cybersecurity posture of your organization and put in place structures where you can be in a position to influence the outcome, the risk posture, and the strategic decisions that are made in your organization. And I look forward to the discussions later as we explore how we can together build a cyberspace, a secure cyberspace for all. Cybersecurity is, after all, a team sport. And I look forward to working together with you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, David.